Welcome to the Leadership Conversations podcast. I'm your host, Jono White. I'm the founder and principal consultant of Clarity. We are an Australian-based consultancy that works with leaders around the world, and our passion is to invest in people to become everything they're meant to be in order to fill the world with healthy organizations that people love to work for and customers line up to buy from. The goal of this podcast is to invest in you and your leadership. If you're just joining us for the first time, then feel free to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there. The most popular being our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from around the world in all different sectors give their in-depth answers on leadership, what books they love, what they found most challenging, uh, the most meaningful stories, how they how they structure their time through the day. That's free, so go and check it out. And we'd love to interview you about your leadership. I believe you have advice from your experience, your context, and your life so far that is important and can help other leaders. It's also a great way to give back. It's free to get involved, and you can do so by going to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest, or just Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form that pops up. We have a free resource for you on our website. It's called Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook. It has interviews with 10 world class leaders, and you can go to consultclarity.org. It's right at the top and get that today. Uh, we also have a daily email that we send out to over 15,000 leaders, and that email contains the highlights, our best content from our podcasts, our blog, uh, my book, uh, the books that we're loving that are out there about leadership. It's also the best way to get access to our masterclasses and workshops before anyone else. And there's also exclusive and limited uh, special options just for subscribers. And you can subscribe by going to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe. Now my gift to you is to work incredibly hard to provide the best leadership content I can to invest in you and your leadership. So if you're finding our content helpful, if you find this podcast helpful, then your gift to me uh, could be this. If you, if you do find it helpful, then write a review or rate our content and make sure you subscribe or follow. I can't emphasize enough how helpful that is. It really does help us to get the word out there so we can invest in more leaders to become everything they're meant to be. It also means a lot to me personally when people like you and people in our community share our content on social media. So if you do that, then please do look for me, Jono White, to tag me and look to tag Clarity uh, on whatever platform you're on. And our team, including me, I, I'm always looking to see when people have mentioned us so that I can engage with you. And also we look at sharing content. So if you if you write something about something we've done, there's also a good chance we'll share that with our followers. So if you could do that, that is a massive, massive help as we try to invest in as many leaders as we can around the world. Last of all, you can check out my book about how to deal with difficult people even if you hate conflict. It's called Step Up or Step Out. It's available on Amazon. You can just look up Step Up or Step Out John O'White, or you can go to store.consultclarity.org forward slash book and check it out there. I have coached leader after leader after leader, and in more than 50% of the sessions, this topic comes up. How do I deal with this person? I'm finding it really difficult, and, and I just want to find a way that doesn't blow up to do a really, just to have a difficult conversation, to lead them better. How do I do that? There's a three-step process that I outline in this book that I believe can help you. Okay, let's get into today's episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to another episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast. Today's guest is Angelique Hamilton. Angelique is founder and CEO of HR Chic Group. Welcome to the podcast, Angelique. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you on here. I'm looking forward to chatting about your story. First of all, tell us about what you do at HR Chic Group. 
Well, we are a, a woman-owned, women-led, um, globally recognized organization um, that is digital, and we support small businesses, startups, and those inter, um, enterprising organizations creating uh, really great cultures uh, for individuals. So that is one of the um, concepts that we really thrive on. Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much for, um, for sharing that with us. Let's, uh, let's jump straight into your story. And I want to ask you about uh, going back to the beginning when you were growing up in, those, in, in that time of your life, that season when you were younger, what were some of the moments or themes from your life that really shaped you into the person you are? I think one of the themes that really shaped me to the person I am today is just being a servant leader. And I um, actually saw that um, embodied uh, through my mother and my grandmother and just seeing that they are always willing, um, you know, just to give back and to share. But they led in that capacity to me. That was a, just an awe. I was like, OK, if they can do it, I want to grow up and be just like that. So um, that was I, I would say that my um, my childhood was really instrumental and being um, formed and shaped by some of the things that they did. And um, yeah, I, lo I love hearing that. Is there any, are there any stories that come to mind specifically around, um, you know, what you, you, I can hear how that shaped you so much, any specific moments that stand out for you and you think, yeah, that, that pops into my head for some reason. Yeah. Um, well, just, you know, judging from my grandmother, she was always one. If she had a dollar, she would give you her last dollar. And, um, and one of the things that she always did was to share her wisdom and her learnings from what she uh, went through with others. Um, she was really, um, to me, she was very instrumental in being a mentor um, to young women as they were um, growing up. Um, she was always very active in our community, um, always very highly supportive of different um, groups, especially Girl Scouts. And that was one of the um, different groups that I was very, um, uh, I would say, charged with and being a part of um, because of her connection to it. And I just saw how she just gave back and she just did it with such ease and that she always wanted to make a difference for someone else. And by me seeing that as an example, that was something that I always wanted to strive for um, as I entered into adulthood. Yeah, that's wonderful. She sounds like a lovely role model. Mm -hmm. uh, interested to know, as you grew a bit older, can you think of... Um, one of your first leadership opportunities, and it doesn't have to be in a work setting, it could have been in school or it could have been, um, you know, I, sometimes people are, uh, will say, <laughs> I remember when I was five and I I was, um, you know, I would buy candy from from the shop and then I would, I would sell it to kids at school. And, you know, so sometimes it's when they're young, other times it's when people are 30 and they say, that was probably the first time I really stepped out and led something. So. Can you think of one of the first leadership opportunities you had? What comes to mind? Well, one of the unique leadership opportunities I had, actually, I, um, I served in band when I was in junior high. And one of the things that I always tried to achieve was getting that first seat. I played the clarinet and um, I always struggled to get the, the first seat. And the, what came with the first seat is that you actually led your entire group uh, with the music uh, that was set for that week. And I think that was like one of my first really true examples where I had to really demonstrate leadership. I achieved the first chair seat. I was so ecstatic and so happy. And I'm like, now I got the seat, but now I'm responsible for these 10 people <laughs> that are part of our section. So what do I do? What am I responsible for? So <laughs> that was like look, my first step into leadership being able to respond to individuals, um, listen to their feedback, being highly receptive of their feedback, and really trying to lead the group so that we actually were in sync, um, we uh, played our melody well, and we were more or less a team. So I think that was like one of my very, very first examples that I had of leadership. Yeah, I love it. I love those kind of examples. Do you remember uh, any lessons that you really learned from that role or any, I, I think when we're in those kind of first leadership 
opportunities, sometimes that's when we're really cutting our teeth and we make, uh, we look back and we think, I cannot believe I did that like that or anything come to mind from that particular <laughs> opportunity about how you made mistakes or maybe you did some things and, and learned uh-huh. lessons well, always stuck with you. Yeah, I, I think what stuck with me because, you know, as soon as I achieved that seat, I thought like, I'm a leader, you know, I just tell everybody this is what they should do and they would listen. And I learned, you know, by mistake that that's not how leadership is, um, that you have to take all voices and take everybody's um, perspectives, their views into consideration when you're a leader. So that was one of my first learning lessons um, as a leader, um, just ensuring that everyone had a voice, everyone is able to participate and everyone is a part of that team. So I think that was like one of the very first lessons that um, really helped shape me as a leader and that uh, really taught me uh, to be the leader that I am today. Yeah, I love that. I think you you said that so well because that's definitely for me been one of the biggest learnings I've had doing this podcast is it's been a wonderful reminder chatting with so many amazing leaders that uh, when we when we step into leadership so often we think now now people are going to listen to me now I'm going to have support from this group and what you realize really fast is actually the role of the leader so often is to support the people you're leading and to and to help them and more often than not to actually listen to them rather than um, uh, necessarily <laughs> having them listen to you. It's, it's, you know, it's about being a better listener than it is um, a speaker a lot of the time in my experience. Right. Right. Exactly. So over your career and you've mentioned um, some people from your childhood, I loved hearing you talk about your grandmother. Uh, what about through the rest of your career so far? Are there any other, and I'm sure there's a bunch of people, but is there anyone that comes to mind that you could sort of single out who has been a wonderful mentor or a, um, a, a really positive, had a really positive influence on your leadership? Yeah, I think uh, one of the individuals that had a really um, positive impact on me is uh, one of my first managers, actually, when I first um, entered the workforce. Uh, I really <laughs> try to emulate a lot of the um, characteristics and abilities of my manager. Um, I had a part-time role when I was in um, college um, working for actually Prudential Insurance um, in their insurance division. And my leader at the time, I was just um, so impressed how he led, um, very charismatic, um, very impressionable with all of us, you know, being a college students. And, you know, of course, everybody has their own mind. But he was really able um, to bring us all together collectively as a team to work together. And one of the things that I really admired about him uh, was one is his resiliency. You know, when things weren't going well as a team, he managed to really um, bring us all together, you know, regardless and and for us to focus on the future. And he was always future focused and always focusing on what can be instead of what should have been. And so I think I learned a lot from him because of that and not to focus so much on the past, but to focus on the here and now and focus on the future that I've been really able to take a a lot of those traits into my current leadership roles that I've had. Um, And just that he was also an attentive listener. He was so authentic um, when he was responding to individuals. I never felt that... um, he was, you know, putting on, so to speak, uh, with uh, the team. And he was just always there um, and was really encouraging um, to the entire team and the entire staff. So that is one of the things that I've always tried to do as a manager and as a leader is to really focus on bringing the team together, that we work as one and not work in, you know, different um, compartments or silos. And then secondly, um, just really trying to motivate and really um, energize the team to achieve excellence. Yeah, he sounds like a great manager. And I know it was a long time ago, but any specific stories that yes. come to mind? <laughs> Anything you can think back? And that's right. I remember how he dealt with that issue and he handled that really well, or he really listened to me when I when I was trying to get something across. Any, any uh, stories you can share? 
Yeah, one of the the stories I can share, we actually had um, um, a schedule because at the time I was actually, we were processing uh, remittance, which were insurance um, payments monthly uh, for our claimants. And uh, each of us had a goal and we had to achieve a goal. But in between setting this goal, we actually had a storm that was approaching our, our center. Um, so he knew we had to uh, make the numbers, but we also had to prep. Um, but he was so, um, what I just remember about him is being focused on us as individuals and human beings that he really wanted to ensure the safety of the staff. So first and foremost, he ensured that we were all safe. Um, he took care of the work and making sure that that got packed away. And then from there, um, you know, once all of us were, you know, in a safe place and we were at home, he even checked in, you know, later that evening uh, just to make sure that everyone was safe. So it was to me from that I was able to take away that not only did he care about me as an employee, but he cared about me as a person. And I think that is so important now um, in the world of work and how we're operating in the world of work that we're not just, you know, considered just as an employee, but we're considered as human beings. And I think um, I do remember that instance and um, respectfully, I, I just felt that he's always, he was always one that really modeled what true leadership was. Yeah, he sounds like a great leader. And um, mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think you, you said that so well. It's, it's that, uh, you know, what popped into my head as you were talking about that was um, there's a Patrick Lencioni book around employee engagement. I think it's called The Truth About Employee Engagement. And um, he talks mm -hmm. about three, three things that employees need to experience to be engaged. And one of them is, um, or, or three things that, that employees often experience if they're disengaged. And one of them is anonymity and that sense of not being known. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, which is why I find this topic so interesting, you have a book like Drive, which I think is Daniel Pink, and that he talks about three ways to motivate people and one of them is autonomy and i love that idea of okay how do you help your people have autonomy without anonymity it's like how can you help them feel so known and yet feel empowered mm -hmm. like they're able to and I, and I think often we get it the other way around right like we don't really get to know them right. but we want to tell them exactly what to do <laughs> and um you just described your manager who did that so well for you you felt known and cared about as a human human being not just as an employee um, and it's such a simple thing right, right? it's it sounds so simple but it's i think i always That's love simple. in these podcasts yeah, reminding people you're mentioning it right now you could have mentioned anything from all the years so far in your career and that story came to mind that's the power of just caring for people as human beings mm -hmm. as a leader mm-hmm Absolutely. Yeah. And, and I think uh, I've had a, a lot of great leaders, but he always stood out to me, I guess, because he was like one of the first ones that I had that it was so impressionable. But um, too, that he, to me, he, he, his leadership was just so effortlessly that he, it wasn't something that it was an act or something that he was really trying to work at. It just came with ease. And so was really impressed about that. And I was like, you know, when I become a manager, I want to become a manager just like that. <laughs> that's what I want it to do. Oh, I love that. And that's, I think everyone listening who is a leader in any sense, you want to be leading in a way that people think like that. That's, um, that's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, so once again, if we look at your career so far, there's so many things we could, we could talk about and ask about different points, but I love to ask about significant aha moments or a shift that you experienced as one listener, uh, sorry, as one um, guest said, you know, he uses that word of when did you have a shift? And I, th and I think it's, I, so I've really borrowed that. Um, and, and I think it's a great idea. Can you think of any leadership shifts or any aha moments through your career that stand out where something for some reason, the penny really dropped and you, and you went, ah, oh, and, and it's stuck with you. I don't know. I, I think um, I would say that when I actually became a manager, I think that's when everything shifted. Um, I had always been like a team leader, you know, or supervisor, but, you know, not really having that full scope of responsibility. It's a difference. Um, and then I, I actually did feel the shift that I was 
responsible for this team, accountable for this team, but also trying to ensure that my team was um, really encouraged uh, to be the team, the best team that they could be. And I think that was like when I first became a, an HR manager and um, had a very small but mighty team. Um, but I, I felt that shift where not only was I accountable for the people's sake of it, but then there was that financial responsibility that I had not had before. Um, so I was like, okay, all right. So there is actually a tie into this. Like, you know, my people actually do have some impact to the profitability of the organization. So what do I need to do in order to make sure this happens is to make sure that my employees are happy. So I think that was like the first time that I, that happened because before, again, I had been a team lead, you know, a supervisor and I wasn't really responsible. I could always, you know, put that responsibility to somebody else. But once I took onus of it, um, to me, I always strive to keep um, the employees um, satisfied, engaged, that they have meaningful work and that they're able to really develop in their roles. And that was the first opportunity for me to do that and the first opportunity for me to d demonstrate my leadership. Yeah, I love that. And I think it is there is a change, isn't there, when you get that responsibility um what what have you learned what have you learned now if if um as you reflect on that what, what have been the biggest lessons you've learned about when you have a team of people and you're managing them and, and you have that added responsibility um I, I know that's a big question but um i know there'll be listeners who are leaning in because they've recently taken a role like that or maybe they've been in that role for 20 years but they they know like uh like me i certainly think i can i can develop in that area any tips on how to, particularly when you have that responsibility and you're leading a team of people, how to do that really well? Yeah, for one thing, I would tell people to take it one day at a time. It's not going to happen overnight. You know, for, for, for some reason, I thought like, once I become, you know, a manager, I can just do this. It's so simple. It's so easy. And it is a challenge. I would tell people it is hard work, um, but it is worth the effort. So taking one day at a time, really, you know, we talked about earlier and really getting to know your staff members. It's, you know, it's rather unfortunate. There are so many leaders who don't know their staff. Um, you know, they know them by name, but they really don't know them. And I think it's so important to establishing a rapport, building a rapport, establishing a good relationship with your team members and your staff. Um, and then um, three is really think about the things that matter to them. Um, not only are they there to do a job and perform a scope of work, but what can you do as a leader to ensure they can reach that next level and really achieve optimal success for their career? And I think that's what's important as a leader, because there are so many different things that you can focus on. But the one main thing that you should focus on is always your people. Yeah, that's so good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Um, let's jump into yeah. Leadership Express. I've got a few questions. I'm really excited to hear your thoughts. The first one is, what's a book that you have, if you think back, you've gifted it a lot to people or you've recommended it a lot to people? Uh, well, there's a couple of books. I used to always give <laughs> good to great. I used to always do that because I felt that that was good for people to see the example of how to create a you know, winning culture. Um, but one of the things that I, one of the books that I really focus on now is about culture and I have, you know, referred this book, the culture code, I think is so important to focus on the culture, putting the culture at the center of everything you do. And so I've shared that with other peers, um, individuals who are new to leadership, those who aren't so new to leadership. And um, I've shared that book, um, directly with them. There are a couple of great books, Good to Great and The Culture Code, wonderful recommendations. One-on-one mm -hmm. uh, -on -one yeah. meetings, this comes up all the time. Leaders want to know, how can I run better one-on-one -on -one meetings with my direct reports? Do you have any advice? Yes, um, the one-on-one -on -one meeting should just be a conversation and dialogue between you and the employee. 
I think what gets in the way um, some of the times is that most individuals use that meeting. It's just so, I don't know, it's very rigid <laughs> in terms of the meeting itself. Um, and it's too formal. I mean, it's your employee. It should be very an informal conversation. Um, yes, you can get quick updates, but the bulk of that meeting should be dedicated to the employee. You know, where are they? You know, wh what is some of the support and resources that you can give your employee? What are some of the future focus items that you can work on um, as a leader with the employee? And so I think that really stimulates the conversation and that keeps the conversation going. So it's not really a check the box and it's so rigid and so formal and that it feels like, you know, you're just, you know, really just going through the motions with that employee. Yeah, that's great advice. Uh, what about time management? This comes up all the time for leaders and, you know, you've got, you've got different books out there that's like the 5 a.m. club. And, and um, I think there's really, I, I always love asking people about this because for a lot of leaders who feel so time poor, sometimes they can feel like they're the only ones in the world who aren't waking up at 4.30 a.m. And and some people say, well, that actually that is what I do. And that's why that's that's part of my, you know, that is my routine. Other people say, no, it's it, what I do is completely different. You know, there's no one rule, one size fits all. What works for you? How, what are the biggest tools or resources or strategies you found to help you with your time management? Well, for one, I am an early bird. I'm an early person. I've always gotten up and, you know, um, I've always been up right at the crack of dawn, like 4 a.m., um, 4.30 ish. Um, but one of the things that I focus on is really um, blocking out time. I block out time on my calendar to just focus on just, you know, free form work. Um, there's also time that I focus just on personal time. I dedicate um, time during the month um, just for um, free personal time, just so that I can get that rest and, re <laughs> and that relaxation. Um, also, I also work with different project management tools. I've used monday.com, asana.com integrating that with my calendar to ensure that I'm up to date on all of my projects, all of my deliverables. I'm keeping all of my tasks up to date. I actually have voice uh, memos as well that remind me of things that are coming up. So I really try to stay organized and focused and I'm also a um, checklist person. So I do actually have a checklist that I um, work on throughout the week. Um, I don't use it just, you know, day by day to check, check something off, but I use it throughout the week just to get a gauge on where I'm trending and how I'm tracking um, for any projects that I have. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, and can you tell us a little bit more about that, about that tool that you use? Did you say, is it a checklist? Yeah, I actually have created a checklist. I've used a checklist for decades now. And so I've created my own personal checklist. Um, it's divided between um, personal and professional. And also I have a section just dedicated to task. Um, and then I have what I consider mini task. And mini tasks are things that I can complete pretty easily and get that accomplished within the day. And those tasks that I have set aside for um, a weekly completion or monthly completion, I usually have a section on my task list with notes so that I can better inform myself on things that I need to add to and how I can really um, update my calendar and ensuring that I'm accomplishing the things that are priority. So good. Uh, what about favorite questions you ask if you think about you in a one-on-one -on -one session with a client or, or in a workshop or with the team or or with um you know in in some setting if you what are some questions that are angelique's favorite questions to ask <laughs> well my favorite question to ask whether it's my employee client or whomever i'm working it with is what can i do to help you to do your job better or you know what are some of the things that i can do to enable you uh, or support you to do your job better? I think that's a good question to ask um, because that allows a person to really um, um, give back in a, a response that's really centered about them and it's not all about me. You know, um, I'm not telling you what you need to do. You're actually giving me that direction. So that question has been um, very informative. It's also helped. Um, if there's one of the questions I always ask, even of my employees and also clients, 
Um, if there's something that you feel that I can do better, what is that one or two things that you feel that I can do better? Right. Um, so that gives me feedback on how I can improve my delivery. Yeah, <laughs> you remind me of something that I, <laughs> I, um, I've caught myself doing, which is I have a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, one of the coaches um, who works with me, we have a, um, a quick survey that goes out after someone does a session that really asks about how listened they, how, how much they felt they were listened to. And I realized, wait a second, this is so unfair. I'm not actually sending this out when <laughs> I do a session with people. And it was just one of those blind spots. Uh, I, I send out a sort of net promoter score um, to, to people that I work with or connect with, but I just had that revelation. And I thought, and, and I love that you're saying this because the more, um, and this is the challenge with leadership. I think the more opportunity, responsibility and, and authority you have, the more you're then in control of the feedback you receive. And so if you want to right. get real authentic feedback, you have to ask for it and you have to, right. you have to find a way to ask for it that is helpful for the other person. And that's why I think the way you just, the way you articulated that is so important because you, you need to really give permission and couch it as, you know, not just say to someone, so what are, you know, what, what, what am I doing wrong? Um, and people go, oh, I'm not going to say anything to you. <laughs> right. um, and I really like the way you articulated that because you have to do that. The more, the more, um, the more power you have as a leader, the more, in my opinion, you need to be super intentional and careful that you're not living in a bubble and you find out what, what people are really right. thinking about how you're performing and where you can improve. Absolutely. It's one of those things, isn't it? The people that need it most, <laughs> if we think about like the time you need it most is when you've got the most responsibility. The time you need it potentially mm -hmm. least is when you're in a really a role where you feel like there's not much influence. And that's when you get all the feedback in the world. <laughs> Sometimes you think, oh, I keep, I keep hearing from everyone about what I'm doing wrong. Um, and it, in some ways it should be the other way around. Okay, uh, last question. And this has been so much fun. Um, if you could only give one piece of leadership advice to a young leader, what would you say to them? Uh, one leadership advice. Oh, wow. That is so hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually a, a hard question just to give them one piece of advice because there's so much that you can give um, to someone can, just starting out. You can also I have, would a, always have a say, moment, um, and, and you can pick a couple of things. Sometimes people are like, can I say two things? I'm like, yes, there's no, I just, yeah. I, I like... I always like forcing people to, I'm sure you do the same in coaching or, cons, you know, consulting. It's always fun to force people to choose. Um, so that's, that's really what I'm doing. But if you have a couple of things, feel free to share them. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the, the one um, primary things that I would share for with a new leader is that if you're just stepping into leadership, definitely um, look for a mentor, uh, look for someone that you can reach out as an ally who can share their experience with you, offer some guidance, offer some support for you, because it's going to be, you know, quite difficult, you know, as an adjustment as you enter into leadership. So I think it's important to first, you know, find that mentor that you can work with and um, take up as a peer. Um, two, I would give a second advice is really to get to know your team. I mean, that to me, and I, I know I say that a lot, but I think it's so important to get to know your team, get to understand your team, and really be there for your team. Um, because if you don't, um, that's where you have a loss of engagement, a loss of employee job satisfaction, and there's also that impact to retention. So, it's so important that you really get to know your team, create those relationships uh, from day one as you get in there with your team. Uh, that's so important. Wonderful advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. For people who've just loved hearing a bit of your story and your advice today, how can they connect with you online? Absolutely. So um, you can find me under the HR Chic Group, which is H-R-C-H-I-Q-E group. I am found on LinkedIn. Uh, we're on also Facebook, Instagram, and you can also find our website, which is www.hrsheetgroup.com. Wonderful. Well, such a great episode. So many wonderful stories. And I love how we've gone on little tangents about um, anonymity and, and um, getting to know your team. Just 
uh i always enjoy mm-hmm. where these where these episodes go uh, for our listeners thank you for tuning in i really believe you would have gotten a lot out of this uh this half an hour um don't forget i also have the john o white leadership podcast and the leadership question of the day podcast the two other places you can go if you're a podcast enthusiast to uh to invest in your leadership but i want to finish today by saying a massive thank you to you angelique for being so generous with your time Um, as I said, for sharing wonderful stories and advice and for being such a joy to spend time with. Thank you for coming on the podcast. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of the Leadership Conversations podcast as much as I did. If you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to check out consultclarity.org. That's our website, consultclarity.org. We have so many free resources on there, including our seven questions on leadership series. We've had more than 1,500 leaders from all over the world in all different roles, in different industries, answer these seven questions on leadership and leaders give these in-depth answers around how they spend their time, uh, a book that's been significant for them. It's just a gold mine. It's completely free to access. So go to consultclarity.org and look for that. We'd also love to interview you about your leadership. I believe your experience, your life, your context means that you have advice on leadership that other leaders can learn from. Yes, you, if you're going, not me. Well, no, I really believe you would have something to add. So if you're looking for a way to give back, it's completely free to get involved. And we would love to interview you through the seven questions on leadership. You just go to consultclarity.org forward slash seven dash questions dash interest or Google consultclarity.org seven questions interest and fill out the form and get involved. We have a free resource on our website called the Leadership Survival Guide. It's a 57 page ebook, 10 world-class leaders giving their thoughts on leadership and that's completely free. It's available on our homepage consultclarity.org right at the top. So make sure you go and get that and download it today. And we have a free daily email that you can subscribe to. We send this out to over 15,000 leaders from around the world. And uh, it contains the highlights of content from our podcasts, our blogs, um, our books, books we're reading. It's got the best content. And it gives you exclusive, limited, early access to our masterclasses, workshops, new products, special offers. It's all for our subscribers. You can go to consultclarity.org forward slash subscribe and join 15,000 other leaders. And you know, my gift to you is to work really hard, particularly through the Leadership Conversations podcast. I have been blown away by the quality of the leaders and I'm learning as much as anyone in doing these interviews. So I'm having a great time. And my gift to you is to keep lining up the best leaders I can to invest in your leadership. Your gift to me, if you're finding this helpful, there is something that you could do that would help us out massively. And that is to write a review and to leave a rating for our podcast or wherever you're watching or listening to this. I can't tell you how much that helps us out. Also subscribe or follow. It really does make a difference in helping us to help more leaders become everything they're meant to be. Another thing that means a lot to me personally is when I see our community share our content. So if you do share this or any other piece of content on social media, then thank you and and please do that. And look for me, John O. White or Clarity and tag us in your post. Our team is always looking for posts to engage with from our community. And there's also a chance that we'll share your content uh, to go beyond and share it with our followers. Last of all, you can check out my book. It's called Step Up or Step Out, How to Deal with Difficult People Even If You Hate Conflict. I wrote this book because 50% of the coaching sessions I have with leaders, this topic comes up again and again and again. And it's this idea of how do I have this difficult conversation? How do I lead this person better when I'm finding them difficult? Or in some cases you look and you say, I think I might be leading a difficult person. They're just quite difficult to lead or I'm finding them quite difficult to lead. So there's a three-step process that I unpack in step up or step out. And the amazing thing, and I've literally done this myself and I've heard it anecdotally from other leaders as I've coached them, is that if you follow this process, you will see that person step up and change their behavior or make a decision, which is to step out some of the time. Uh, 95% of the time, people will step up or step out in just four weeks. 
and I stand by that. It's uh, you have to read the book to understand, but uh, I really do believe in it, and I've experienced it firsthand. It works. So you can go to Amazon, look up "Step Up or Step Out," John O. White, or store.consultclarity.org forward slash book. Well, thank you so much for listening. We're going to be back with a new episode next time of the Leadership Conversations podcast. And I hope today has helped you to take another step towards becoming the leader you're meant to be. See you next time. 